All right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have Sal, and Sal is researching the effectiveness of a forearm band prototype on grip strength. The study will be performed on 150 subjects with lateral epicondylalgia. One group will receive the band, and the other group will receive education regarding self-treatment of their condition. Which of the following is the least likely to increase the power of the study? So we have A, increase and increase in the sample size. B is a decrease in the variance within each group. C is a reduction in the beta value. And D is an increase in the variance within each group. All right. So again, this is this research, y'all. I know, I know, I know it's not a lot of points on the exam, but we definitely need to know some of these major concepts that show up, power being one of them. So let's get to work. So we had Sal, and Sal is researching the effectiveness of the forearm band prototype on grip strength. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. That's our first line up top. And so I'm getting an idea. Y'all know those bands that kind of go around the forearm and they're there to help with lateral epicondylalgia. So that helps, you know, me to get that like picture, that visual picture of what's kind of going on here. So we're, so Sal is researching the effectiveness of this band on grip strength. Now it says the study will be performed on 150 subjects, all with lateral epicondylalgia. Pretty straightforward. I got my number of subjects. Sounds pretty good. Got my condition as well. Nothing in particular is really sticking out at me at this point. As I roll down um, the rest of the question, it says one group will receive the band and the other group will receive education regarding self-treatment of their condition. So you could definitely see we got two groups here. I don't know how they're situated. I'm guessing 75 subjects on one side, 75 subjects on the other. A group is getting the band and the other group is not just getting the uh, education. All right. So we got our two groups out in front of me. And so it says, which of the following is the least likely, least likely to increase the power of the study? Now, I want to slow up real quick because this is important. We got to remember that the question stem says least likely, not most likely. All right. Most of the time, that's what you'll see on practice exams uh, and potentially the MPTE as well is most likely most often, you know, those types of things. But in this one, it's saying least likely. So we have to make sure we keep that in mind as we're answering this question. All right. So let's go down. For those of you on the podcast, let me go ahead and read the answer choices to you again. So we have a and increase in the sample size. B is a decrease in the variance within each group. C is a reduction in the beta value. And then D is an increase in the variance within each group. So let's go ahead and knock this one down. It says an increase in the sample size. So when I look at this one, I have to think about, well, what are they really talking about here? They say sample size. And, and in this case, we're talking about the number of people that are actually being studied, right? Or the number of people that are actually in these groups. So if I increase the sample size, the question is, what's that going to do to the power? Is that going to increase the power? Is it going to decrease the power? Is it going to keep the power the same? What does it do? All right. So before we really figure that out, I have to tell you all one thing. Do you, I should say, I have to ask you one thing. Do you understand what power is to start with? All right. Power is your ability. Power of the study is your ability to detect a significant difference when there's one actually present. Your ability to actually detect change. That's what power is. Go ahead and write that down in your notes. It's really important. All right. So it's the ability to detect change. Now, A says an increase in the sample size, increase in the number of people in the, in the study. So would that increase, decrease, or keep my power the same? So actually, that is going to increase my power. It's, it's going to enhance my power. And the reason being is that, let's say I had 10 people, right? And I was running a study on 10 people. Do you think it's going to be easier for me to find a difference with the 10 people? Or would you think it would be easier for me to find a difference if I had a thousand? 
probably be a lot easier to find differences with a thousand people rather than just 10 of them. Right. And so increasing the sample size increases your ability to detect change. So what am I saying to you? I don't like A as the answer here. Again, it's going to increase the power and we're looking for something that's the least likely to increase it. Let's go to B. B says a decrease in the variance within each group. All right, they're throwing out another one of these names here. And <laughs> I know it could get a little trippy. I had a few of y'all today talking about, oh shoot, gotta look up variance now. And, and I got you, all right? So variance is looking at really the difference, all right? That's an easy way of really looking at variance is the, the, the percentage or the opportunity to detect a difference. All right, and so the, the answer here, it says a decrease in the variance within each group. So if we decrease the variance, what would that, what would that look like? I mean, as far as our, our groups are concerned, you know, would we find a lot of variability within the group or a lower variability within the group? Well, the answer choice kind of tells you that, right? It says a decrease in the variance within each group. So that means that the people within each group are very closely related. I mean, as far as their characteristics. All right. And so, you know, as far as that's concerned, I actually kind of like this answer as far as improving the power. It actually increases the power. You want to know why, though? Because I know this can give, get a little trippy. I know a lot of you all were looking at variants and like, oh, I can't determine is it B or D here? Well, here's the thing. I really need to explain this, especially to those of you who are on the podcast right now. Think about it this way. You have two groups in front of you, right? And let's just talk about there being balls, all right? There's balls in each group. And let's say that there's a group of blue balls and there is a group of red balls. All right, so we got these two groups. Now, is it? Would you say it's difficult or is it easy to find the difference between the group of blue balls and the group of red balls? Is it easy or difficult to find the difference? You should be saying, well, it's pretty easy, right? I mean, the blue ball and the red ball are completely different. I could definitely see the difference between two. Great. See, that's a decreased variance within each group because you got your group of blue balls, which they all look the exact same, and your group of red balls, and they all look the exact same. See, that's decrease of variance within each group. But guess what? That actually increases the power. Why? Because now I'm gonna be able to tell the difference really easily between the groups. Between the groups, all right? So B is actually not gonna be the right answer here. It can't be. Because a decrease in variance will increase the power. B is out. Let's look at C. C says a reduction in the beta value. I know, I don't know if you have been lost at this point. If you had to pull the car over to the side, I don't know what you had to do at this point. There's a lot of terms here, all right? Beta value being another one. Uh, beta value is you know, a, a specific term, I don't know if you've ever heard of like types of errors, right? You have your type one error and your type two error, all right? Well, what can happen is when you say that there isn't a significant difference, but there actually is one, that's also known as a type two error. You say that there is no significant difference with your results, but there actually is. You made an error. Okay, well, your beta value, is going to be the probability, the chance of you saying that there is no difference when there actually is one, AKA your chances of making a type two error. Now, you might have to rewind that piece again and, and, and write it down in your notes, that's great, but what do I really want you to pull from this answer? I want you to pull this, that the beta value is inversely proportional to power. Meaning that as beta goes down, power goes up. This is what I need you to write in your notes. As beta goes down, power is going to go up. And so C says a reduction in the beta value. So if I have a beta value that's going down, what's going on with my power, y'all? Come on, talk to me. The power is going up, exactly. And if you remember what the question's asking, the question's asking, which of the following is the least likely to increase the power? Well, beta 
a reduction in beta is definitely going to increase it. So that can't be the answer. Let's look at D. Let's look at D. D says an increase in the variance within each group. Let me say it again. An increase in variance within each group. You know how I was talking to you before about the two groups, one having the set of blue balls and one having the set of red balls, right? Okay, great. So we got those two going. Now, I want you to picture this. What if we switched, the, switch these groups up and then we had a group of, you know, blue balls and red balls all mixed together. That was group one. And then group two had a group of red and blue balls mixed all together. Right. And those were our groups. Now, do you think it's going to be easy or difficult to find the difference between the two groups? It's going to be pretty difficult, right? Because group one has blue and red balls mixed all in there. And group two has blue and red balls mixed all in there. So if you really look at it, it's kind of like it's going to be difficult for you to tell the difference between group one and group two. That means your power is going to be low, baby. All right. And so D it is the best answer here. An increase in variance within each group is going to actually decrease the study's power. Final answer is hot diggity D, baby. D as in dog. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. It is not easy. I get you. A lot of research terminology here. One thing that I can say, you know, as your coach, one thing that I can tell you to do at this point is if you are going to study research, spend a bit of time instead of just taking a, a bunch of questions and kind of just memorizing things. How about you start off with just understanding the terminology first and understanding what these things mean? Because a lot of times we just get the question wrong because we don't have the terminology. We just don't understand enough about the terms in order to then apply the knowledge. Does that make sense? And so if your head's spinning a little bit with all the terms that we mentioned in this uh, in this session right here, what I need you to do, just go back through it. Rewind this podcast. Listen to it on your way back home tonight. All right. And, and spend your time just understanding the terms. It'll allow you to apply this stuff. Uh, oh, my gosh. So freaking much better.